Hi, I'd like to welcome everybody to part 10 of week 4 of the Descent Board with Her Starts Molds. If this is your first time watching, my name is Greg and I live in Pensacola, Florida. And this has been a four week project of the recreation of the Descent Board Game by Fantasy Flight Games in the Her Starts Molds with Dental Plaster. Um, as of 11 o'clock last night, the project is complete. And I'm going to sit here and show you what the completed project looks like. And then we'll set up one of the scenarios from the book. So I'm going to put the miniatures on the board so you can see what it looks like on the table. You know, that if you were playing on this type of setup at your house. So in front of me, in the frame right now, I just have a few of the, uh, the treasure chests that were made. Um, I got three coppers, I got th two golds and three silvers. The, as discussed in a previous video, the browns I used are just the Vallejo browns. And... Um, the uh, the metallic colors I use the chainmail, a burnished gold. Those are both by GW, and then I use the Tamaya copper on the chest. The gold pieces are a dwarven bronze by GW, and this is just one of the two of the uh, your kind of your T-shaped intersections. And then over here, there's some more gold piles. And this right here is one of your barricade fences. I'm going to use the uh, the wooden planks from the molds. Over here we have our two pits. We have our ten doors and you can see, you may be able to make out a glimpse of the ones that have the different room colors in them. Those are those small blocks I talked about in my last video. We have single rock piles and stairs. We have the larger rock piles. This is one of the big six by sixes one of the two by sixes and then this board right here is one that I made the suspension bridge on and so if you see the string going across with the suspended bridge you also notice I put some of the effects with the rib cages and there's like a, a destroyed skeleton laying down there like he fell off the bridge and is decayed down there and there's his bones um, over here is just more of your standard intersections on here so this is all this is all part, if you follow the plans, when you're done, this is what you'll have made. Those pieces right there go beside the door so you can block off like a, a four intersection door. These are potions. This is just a little extra something I made to bling it out. I use some small bottles and so like the blue is the health and the orange is the vitality. And then the two other potions from one of the expansions. I just used some of the extra jars I had for that. You have the throne. Again. More pieces. So. You know, if I try and pull back. I don't think I can get this all. In the camera. But when it's all said and done. That's what it looks like. Four weeks we worked on this. And I'd like to give a big thank you to everybody that has watched because you've made this process and this project a lot of fun. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to set up one of the scenarios from the books and I'll be right back and this will be set up on the table as you would sit down if you were going to play a game here with me. So I'll be right back. Climbing out of your tent one morning, you're astonished to find a familiar old man by your fire. I have another task for you if you're up to it, he says. Motioning to a bundle at his feet, he continues, That is a sword, soul biter. It's a cursed thing, but it has its uses. It's the only thing in the world that can defeat Mizrael, a powerful demon. I want you to take the sword and kill the demon with it and throw the black blade into the well of souls to destroy it. One warning, however. Once the protection spell I've laid on it wears off, soul biter will start draining the life from whoever holds it. Leaving the sword where it is, the old man stands to leave. You may also wish to break the iron seals you find in the dungeon as they limit Soulbiter's power while they are intact. Good luck. If you come back alive, I'll have a reward for you. With that, he walks off into the woods. Unwrapping the sword, you find a bundled map with it. That goes out to my Wednesday night gaming group because you're gonna see this map again. This is uh, Quest 7, the Black Blade from the Descent core set. And uh, I'm gonna pick up the camera here and try to give you a top-down view of the board. So if you've never played Descent before, Let's see if I can back this off some. Well, we'll start down here. If you've never played Descent, when you're playing with a cardboard map, it's set up just like this. 
what you have is some of the monsters that come with the game are on the board. I've got the potions down, and I have the basic layout of the board with the map that they'll find. Are all the creatures here they're going to see? Nope. I just laid out a uh, probably about 50% of what's in the static encounter, and then I normally play the Overlord, so I can play, uh, I can spawn monsters and other things throughout the dungeon. So I'm going to see if we can get down a little closer. So we've got all three room locked doors. I've put that bridge piece in, the blue door, the well of souls. You can probably guess who that is. And so, and if you've never played, it's kind of an RPG light. It's just your basic dungeon crawl, but it's a lot of fun. Yeah, you get four people and you get an overlord. The overlord's playing against the players. And uh, the games can run they can run pretty long. They can run anywhere from three to six hours, depending on uh, what you know what scenario you're playing. So you got to you got to slot off a little bit of time, but even a, a small RPG session will probably run you two to four hours. So you know, like I said, this is kind of an RPG light. You're rolling dice, you're getting loot. You know, you have an end goal in this dungeon. As you notice, the pieces are white and red. Your white pieces are your basic piece. Your red piece are your elite units. Um, at some point, I'll paint these, but that's a project for another day. Because that, that's, I have boxes full of the Descent miniatures. So, you know, so, yeah. You can use these pieces for a lot more than just Descent. You know, if you have your own homemade dungeon crawl. I know, uh, like Ben's RPG pile, he builds all his stuff and he runs it for his weekly... D and D game, so there's a lot of other uses. You can build the cavern water set, and uh, you know put these tiles leading up into the caverns and things like that. So overall, it was a really fun project. You know, it took four weeks, uh, about four weeks and two days to finish it. I'm super pleased with the way it came out. I'm going to continue to add on to this. I know the, the other sets, and uh, I want to play around with some clear resin casting because I see some people doing that. Again, if you have, if you're wondering what else you can do with the Hearst Art stuff, go to the Hearst Arts forums, go to the Post Your Pictures thread, and check out some of the stuff that the guys that have been doing this for years have made. It'll blow your mind. It'll really make you want to jump into this. So, I said I had a lot of fun. Uh, things I would change if I did it again. When I do my next project, I'm going to pre-measure a whole bunch of the plaster cups out ahead of time. So. If I need cups that are 187 grams, I'm going to measure out 10 to 20 of those cups with 187 grams in them, put a piece of cellophane over the top or a Ziploc bag and a rubber band around it. That way, all my stuff's measured, so all I got to do is mix water and pour, mix water and pour. Um, the carousel from my earlier video that I showed you that I was sorting my blocks in, that thing saved huge amounts of time. Can't stress enough that's a tremendous investment for less than ten dollars you know so i'm going to add another level to it so i have three tiers but that thing was fantastic for being able to run through these tiles um what else uh when you get the base coating that is going to be the longest point that you're going to spend on this project outside of casting the box the blocks Getting those casts, getting them dried, that's a pretty steady, you know, you can cast them in one day, let them dry for one or two. But when it comes down to your base coat, that olive green, it was a solid two days of painting, you know. So you're looking at over 50 pieces in this set. And every time you think you're just about done, then you've got the doors, then you've got to do the chests, then you've got the rock piles, then you've got the wells, then you've got the three square rock piles, so the stairs. And everything else so you got to plan some time for the base coat the two dry brushing stages i was able to finish those both in the same day this last week i probably put in 25 hours into finishing this up so if you look at the last video at the end of week three i had built all the pieces up to that point and i had started base coating and we took three or four different test pieces and we brought them from base coat first highlight final highlight and we're done so I spent another 25 hours base coating the rest, dry brushing, final dry brushing, building the doors, painting the chest, painting the gold piles, 
working on the wood and that little suspension bridge that goes across. So there, there's a lot of little time in there. Because even yesterday, I was like, all right, I got all these pieces dry brushed. All I got to do is knock out these doors. Well, the doors took about another three hours, you know, to dry brush them up, put the tacky glue on, you know, paint the doors, wash the doors, dull coat the doors, you know, make sure they all looked okay, and then uh, dry brush them up, and then put them all together. You know, so you might want to rush, but when you get down to that stage and after you get that base coat on, you're doing really well, you know, so just finish it out to the end. Like I said, I haven't seen, I've seen a lot of completed projects. I've seen some snapshots of projects along the way. I've done a search or two on YouTube, and I do, I think I'm one of the first ones that's followed a project from the first step to the last, from actually pouring that mix into those molds and bringing it all the way to the end. Even if I'm not, I had a ball. I've talked to a whole bunch of people since this has started that they've really liked it. My view count's gone up. I'd like to thank everybody that's watched it. Um, I'll be back later in the week. We're going to announce the next project. The next project's going to be a two, three monther because I want to bring it up to one of our local conventions here and, uh, you know, some other stuff. So I've got the hobby talk in the works. I had a great time with this project. I really thank you guys for watching. If you watched all 10 parts of this, you know, thumbs up to you guys too because this this was a lot of fun and if you're thinking about do it jump on in and do it this is a great place to start um you know the only added thing i added on there were the little bottles for the potions i think they go a long way on the board for the looks um but other than that this this reproduces the set i had no problem looking at that scenario and putting this board on the table the setup time wasn't any longer to put the tile to put these tiles down as it is to interlock all the other tiles you know, if I'm doing the flat cardboard terrain, and I'd much rather play on this. So, again, thank you. Uh, thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe if you enjoyed the series, because this won't be the last one. I've got two more that I know I'm going to do for sure. Uh, the next one's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to it, so I hope you join me for that. So, again, thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe if you really like it. And I appreciate your time. Thank you, and I'll talk to you again soon.